Good morning. So those of, you, those of you who missed the announcements and you don't know me, I'm Melody, and uh, I currently preach up at DeWittville Hartfield UMC, but I get the privilege of being here today because Pastor Tom is on paternity leave. So today I'm going to encourage you, these little Bibles in your pews, pick one up. We're going to be flipping through some pages today. We're going to start on page 8 in Genesis. But before I begin, let's pray. Holy and gracious God, I ask that your presence just be known here. Jesus, that you may be magnified and glorified, either through my words or in spite of them. May the message be yours today. And may our hearts be softened to hear what you have for each one of us. So Jesus, would your Holy Spirit fill this place as we glorify you. In your name, amen. So if you were here last February, you know that it was my very first sermon ever, and I wish I could say that the nerves change, but it's a different kind of nerves. Last Sunday, Pastor Joe preached about the hard truth about sin. And it wasn't an easy message to preach. Each one of us during our uh, sermon were pretty bold in the reality of sin. And the reality of that sin that each one of us has is death. Fortunately, though, he shared the gift of grace. And that we can all receive forgiveness from God. The reality of sin in our lives and being washed clean from that sin because of God's grace and forgiveness is something that we should be sharing. He also referenced a short clip that he shared here before. It's about an entertainer, Penn Jillette, who is also an atheist. But part of this short little clip was a comment that, and a quote from him that stuck with me afterwards. We should be sharing our faith with others in an attempt to get them to know and follow Jesus Christ. He says in this video that if you believe there is a heaven and a hell, how much do you have to hate someone not to share that with them? Let that question sink in for a moment. How much do you have to hate someone to not tell them about sin and hell and the freedom of eternal life? Friends, sin is real. Sins of the flesh and sins of the heart. It's all real. And in this season of Lent, I've had the opportunity to preach in different places. And I keep inviting people to join me in the process of allowing the Lord to search your heart, to reveal the sins in your life, which is anything that grieves the Lord, repent and confess, so that you too can live in the grace and the freedom that Jesus Christ offers. But then there's more. You have to go and share the good news and to be a blessing to others. Our main scripture today is going to come from Genesis 12, on page 8. But we're also going to flip to other ones. And Pastor Tom is here with us, and he likes hearing the pages flip, so make sure you flip with me. So Genesis 12, 1 through 4. The Lord had said to Abram, Go from your country your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram went, as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old 
when he set out from Haran. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. When we first sat down with the scripture, it seemed pretty simple to me. The first thought I had was the first thought I had was that the Lord said go and Abram went. Seemed like a pretty cut and dry message. But the more I spent time with the Lord with it and prayed over it and studied it, the more I realized that there's a lot more to unpack in just these four little verses. That's why Pastor Joe said last week that a text without a context is a pretext for anything you want it to be. So this morning, I want to share with you a little bit about Abram's story. Because usually when we think of Abraham, we think, or Abram, we think of Abraham. When we think of Abraham, we think of Father Abraham. But Abram came from Ur, land of the Chaldeans, a city of wealth and status. It was a big deal on the trade route back then. And what often comes with wealth and status? Idolatry which is exactly what was going on in this time. Because Abram's father, Terah, was sinning against God in his worships, worship of false gods. So now we're going to flip to Joshua 24, which is on one, page 168. It won't be on your screen, so make sure you flip with me. So Joshua 24, 2 through 3. Joshua said to all the people, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Long ago, your forefathers, including Terah, the father of of Abraham and Nahor lived beyond the river and worshiped other gods. But I took your father Abraham from the land beyond the river and led him through out Canaan. And I gave him many descendants and I gave him Isaac. Notice what Joshua says. The Lord says, I took Abraham from the land and led him to Canaan. The Lord took him. Now we're going to flip into Acts, page 775 in your pew hymnals. told you I was going to have you flip a lot today. So 775... The very bottom of the page. We're in Acts 7. Oh, maybe not. Acts 7, 2 through 4. It's not at the bottom of the page. This is from Stephen. To this he replied, Brothers and fathers, listen to me. The God of glory appeared to our father Abraham. While he was still in Mesopotamia, before he lived in Haran, leave your country and your people. God said, go to the land. I will show you. So he left the land of the Chaldeans and settled in Haran. And after the death of his father, God sent him to this land where you are now where you now are living. The Lord had told him, come to the land, I will show you. And he left. And God brought him to where he was going. He went on an act of faith. 
And now if you'll flip back to me to page 8, back to Genesis. The Lord had said to Abraham, or to Abram, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. Okay, so that was a lot of scripture. I'm going to recap it for you. Abram lived with his father, Terah, where Terah worshipped false gods. The Lord told Abraham, or Abram to leave his family and the land that he knew, to leave what he was comfortable with, and go to the land that God will show him. He was 70 years old when he left Ur. And then we read that Abram stayed in Haran with his father until his father passed away. And then at 75, he left and finished the trip to Canaan. 75 years old. And Abram listened to the Lord. He left on a journey, not knowing where the destination would lead him. And in our own lives, sometimes we know that the Lord is calling us to take a step of faith. But yet, we wait for all the details to be figured out first. Or sometimes we know that we're being called and we hesitate until we feel secure or have the answers and then we're ready to say, yes, Lord, I'll go. And when the Lord tells you to go like he told Abram, are you willing to trust in God? Notice I said trust in God not trust in yourself? Are you willing to listen, to act, and trust in the Lord? In Psalm 21, I've been reminded, it says, where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. And the good news is that when you're called by God, to take a step of faith, it's not about anything that you can do. But it's all about what he will do through you when you're faithful. When we read in Genesis 12, 1 through 4, how many times did it say, you will? Here we go. The answer's there for you. How many times did it say you will? Once. One time in this passage does it say you will. And what does it say you will do? You will be a blessing. So how many times in this passage does it say I will? How many times does the Lord say I will? Six. Six times. And the Lord says, I will. I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. I will bless those that bless you. And I will curse those who are cursing you. Six times, six times the Lord tells Abram what he will do through Abram. Abram just needs to trust in God and to be faithful. All Abram needs to do is to go in faith. I have one more for you. I'm going to go to page 851 in Hebrews. So on page 851, this is the one that's at the bottom of the page, Hebrews 11, verse 8.
by faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. Abraham, Abram, acted on faith. Again, it's not anything that you can do on your own, but it's about trusting in the Lord. It's about trusting in him as you step out in faith, maybe not knowing what's next. God's promise never changed, and nor will it ever. God promised Abram blessings and great things, which he received by being faithful to the Lord and to the Lord's calling on his life to go. And as I mentioned before, we think about Abram, we think about Abraham and Father Abraham. All the stories we learned as kids. The man whose wife was barren, and then God provided a son. And then the Lord told him to sacrifice his son. When God promises blessings, it doesn't mean a life of ease. It doesn't mean a life without challenges. What it does mean, though, is you can live into the life of righteousness. The blessings for Abraham were not just for himself. It was for others. Because eventually he became Father Abraham, the father of many nations, descendants as many as the stars in the sky. Because God wants to bless us, but he also wants us to be faithful, to trust in him, which will bring glory to God. I mentioned the if gathering earlier, and I was able to listen online to some of it. And Sadie Robinson had a really good message. A woman, young woman, who is preaching all over the country and boldly sharing her testimonies and boldly sharing the word of God. And she shared a story from her past year that she was on tour sharing the word of God. And it seemed like every time she shared the word, something personally happened in her life. And one day after she preached the, God and she, or preached the word of God and she was fired up, she got on her travel to her bus and she received a call that her daughter was being star flighted. Now she didn't share details, but her daughter's okay. But she started to doubt. She started to calculate the cost of her personal life in sharing the word and being bold in that until she realized that the blessings that we often think of are not because of anything that we do. And that having faith is, a, is what keeps her going. Have you been wrestling like Sadie did, like I often do, with being obedient to God's call on your life? Is the Lord already calling you to something? And you're trying to hush that little voice. Are you hesitating? I'm telling you right now, surrender. Surrender to that little voice of what he's calling you to. But I'm warning you. Be prepared to receive the blessings. The blessings of blessing others through the work that he will do through you. Because I have more good news. Being faithful to God's call on your life, it has nothing to do with you. It's nothing that you can do or will do or can't do. If that were the case, I would not be standing here today. It's all about trust and having faith in what the Lord can do. And when we fully surrender and fully step out in faith, we get that joy of watching God work and watching the things that unfold. Remember all of those I will statements that he left us with? It's all God's work. 
We just get to be used as a vessel because the only you will statement is you will bless others. It's a great narrative. It's one that I'll sign up for again and again. To be used for God's glory and not have any of the pressure on me because it's nothing that I can do. I just have to be faithful and listen to what he's calling me to. Now, our scripture said, go from your country, your people, your father's household to the land I will show you. If God's very specifically calling you to that, well, then get a passport, pack your bags, and head out. But it could be more simple than that. What if the Lord is calling you to start a small group or invite your coworker to church with you or to pray for your neighbor and pray with your neighbor? What if the Lord is calling you to get rid of something in your life? Sin, envy, greed, pride, fear. There's been so many times where I'll be sitting and listening to a sermon and I have this nagging feeling that the Lord is calling me to do something or to give up something or there's a person on my heart. And I encourage you that if that's been you today where there's something running through your mind, you listen. You go in faith and you trust God Two weeks ago, Andrew preached about the mountaintop experience and how we want to stay there. But staying there would be selfish. He encouraged us to go into the valley and to share. And to share the word of God. And to take your testimony of how when you were faithful, God used you to bless others. The Lord does call all of us to go. I don't know exactly where he's calling each one of you or where or when. But the greater question is, are you going to ignore the call on your life? Or are you going to be faithful and trust in the Lord and be obedient? As children of God, our purpose is to glorify the Lord to worship him. Because a life of obedience to the Lord is a life of worship. And we gather together on Sunday mornings to worship the Lord. But you can worship the Lord the rest of the week with everything else that you are called to do. By trusting in God and being faithful. And then we get to bless others. Jenny Allen, who ran the IF gathering, she closed out the entire session with two questions. And as she spoke these two questions, it just gave me peace. Because they can be challenging, but because I knew the Lord was calling me. First question is, what are you leaving behind? Are you leaving behind anxiety or fear or selfish motives, the worldly blessings that we want and crave of wealth and leadership and status, wants and desires? Are you willing to leave those things behind? What are you leaving behind? And the second question is, what are you moving toward? I hope that the answer to that one is that you're moving toward glorifying the Lord in all that you do, in all that you are, and that you're willing to put aside your own wants and desires and to listen to the Lord. Because guys, like I said, when you're willing to be faithful, the only you will is that you will bless others. And what a great opportunity that is to be used by the Lord to bless others. 
Would you pray with me? Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the message that you have for me and for each one of us here. And I pray that our hearts had been softened. And I pray that you make those little nudges that you have for each one of us in our own lives and you make them bold because sometimes we just need a bold direction. So would you speak to us all and help us to just go out into the valley and take the love that we have for you and just to share it with others and bless others with the love and the forgiveness that you offer us. And that when we see somebody, we have passion and compassion and we want to share our faith because if we truly believe that you are God, then what's stopping us from sharing that? So Jesus, would you soften our hearts and would you continue to spark the love that we have for you as it may grow into others, that may we may go out into the world and love others well. In your holy name, amen. Trust in the Lord and be faithful. And then watch the Lord work as you will be a blessing to others as he continues to bless you. Repent of your sins. And then live in the forgiveness that he gives you. Holy and gracious God, we thank you for being here with us this morning. We thank you for the opportunity just to come and to glorify you. So as we go out into the world, help us to bless others just by being faithful. In your holy name we pray. Amen.